Hello and welcome to the Dev Show NBA podcast. My name's Sean and joining me today is the one and only uh, real Lucas PA, Mr. LB, my man. How are we? I'm well, Sean. How are you? Uh, mm. so you, I'll, t- I'll take that one. Yeah, no, nah, good, good. We, we're both, we've both been jet setting away, yeah. haven't we, huh? Yeah. Some for business, some for pleasure. Yeah, sometimes for <laughs> Don't both, fucking mix them. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's yep. like tequila and beer. Tequila mockingbird. Um, you, listeners of the, the Deep Two Podcast Network will have heard Mark and I talk ad nauseum about uh, our trip to the Gold Coast over the weekend. But Sean, you're going you're gonna to have to enlighten listeners as to what you were doing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, li- if, if you haven't already listened to your pod, guys, it was oh, yeah, really good pod. Too. Um, yeah, I was up at the I was up at Sydney up at the Pullman Hotel uh, for the Plumbing Supply Forum 2024. Yeah, uh, and I don't cover plumbing in any shape or form, but um, I was I was asked to to come in for the good of the company and uh, cover the Plumbing Supply Forum. And as the great worker I am, I did. Yeah, right. is um, there any extra incentive for you? No, nah, it's just it's just brownie points and a good firm handshake. And oh, yeah. yeah, at the end of the day, I mean, they also pay my salary, so yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. they can also ask that. But the you know, just before I left, like a plane, I was going to the airport at like eight thirty, right? So I come downstairs, I've got my suitcase, my little eight thirty a.m. Yeah, I got my suitcase, my little uh, brief. I got a, what's your word? A satchel thing? Sure, satchel. Yeah, yeah, you know, it holds your laptop, but it's made of leather. Yeah. <laughs> so I had my housemate say, she's working from home. She said, oh well, you're off, you know. But oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, but it'll be good to see Sydney. And I'm like, oh, no, it's actually, we're actually in the hotel. It's called uh, Sydney Airport Pullman. Mm. So we're actually getting off the plane. We're getting a taxi for less than five minutes. And we're going to be under a flight path in the hotel. No shit. And the conference is held at the hotel. Oh, my God. And then we're going to wake up and go right back to the plane, right? Oh, my God. So it was Wait, like... How long? How long how it was nights? two nights. Two nights. Yeah. One one was a big day. There was a dinner beforehand on the first night. But it was like, <laughs> we're not going to leave Mascot. Mascot's there, Tullamarine, right? Right. Um, fucking, I was like, this is, usually I'll go for a big walk. If I'm, if, if I get like an afternoon off when I'm over there, I'll go for a walk and I'll just you know, fucking look, right? Pot around, yeah. Yeah, go to their Flinders Street. That's like 90% of traveling. Yeah, People yeah, People are like, yeah. oh, you got to do this and this and this, but 90% of the time you just say, I'm just going to walk. I'm going on a big old walk. Yeah, yeah. And then, um, yeah, and then the, the main day finished and then, uh, myself and my two colleagues were like, uh, we should we should probably do something. We we can't just stay in Mascot, New mm. South Wales for the whole entire uh, for the whole entire trip. Yeah. So we went for a, went for a drive. We got an, got an Uber to Circular Quay. You might be familiar with. Yeah, it's yeah. Where, uh, There's the bridge there and the the Opera House. Yeah. And um, it's, how long was that? The drive was like ten minutes, ten oh, fifteen. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, there it's it's vivid Sydney at the moment, which is their answer to White Night. Right, yeah, they, just, they're welcoming in winter with Vivid Sydney, is that what you're telling me? Well, I don't know about the welcome, but maybe, yeah, maybe <laughs> so. it's, it's definitely start at the start of the month, but okay. yeah, there's heaps of like light installations and all like the big government buildings and stuff, like the, the opera house had, you know, movies playing, not movies, but like, you know, short animations playing yeah, all yeah, over beautiful. and stuff, yeah, beautiful, mate, beautiful, mm. beautiful, um, and then we just like went for a walk, looked at it, and then turned around. Um, but that's that's neither here nor there. Funny story I want to tell you. Oh, there you go. Yeah, that, Glad that, we can make it. Yeah, that's why you, that's why you didn't laugh. <laughs> so we hosted a dinner on the first night. Right. What do you mean? Was this? What does this mean? So like all the people had flown in for the plumbing supply for them. Yeah, and your company. Yeah, we're we're the organisers. We we organise the oh, event. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. so okay. we organise it, and then obviously get the coverage within. I'm the one who covers it f- through the magazine that organised it. Yeah. But um, on the first night we had big dinner, and before the dinner you got like an hour of drinks and stuff. So everyone's in like the little foyer. In the pool. Yeah, in the pool. And yeah, everyone's in the little foyer area. You've got people running around with like wine and beer and soft no drinks and stuff. Yeah, so it's like, but don't say that because it's it's James Berg's. Yeah, <laughs> is this co- this must be costing the the your work your owner a lot of money? Well, it's this yeah, you, but you make money. You get sponsors and you, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So go on. Um, so, <laughs> so you walk around with drinks and stuff, and the schedule clues says you know have drinks at five o'clock and then at or five thirty and then at six thirty we're going to move into the room. We're going to have a, it was a nice buffet dinner. Oh, beautiful! Right. Um. So they were walking around and then. 
like I think when my colleague walked into the the dinner room just to like set up a set up a big stand or something that says like our our logo and stuff on it. Oh yeah. Um, and he went and said, "Oh, there's this bloke, this bloke having a having a chomp, right? A completely empty dinner room. And he's gone to the buffet and he's sitting there with a plate. No. And then so we go, oh yeah, sorry mate, we're actually not eating dinner yet. Like we're all just we're just having the drinks at the moment. He goes, oh, I just I can't hear a thing out there, so I thought I'd come in and eat some food, and then. <laughs> <laughs> my colleague goes oh well we can't like you know we're actually you know it's, it's not that time yet you know, otherwise yeah. you're going to open up all this stuff and you know, you're eating the food when you shouldn't be right <laughs> and he goes ah oh, just you know, can't hear anything too loud okay okay so then go back 6 30 strikes we all move in and then we're all like we all get up and have the meals and stuff I'm lining up. This bloke's gone around again. He's getting a second meal, even though he's already had... Well, third meal. He's already had two by himself. <laughs> That's a bit weird. Um, and I go over and I, I go over and have a chat to him and stuff. Talk, talk, talk. Very interesting cat. Mm. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, 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 was, as I, I was saying to a lot of people, like, you know, what are you looking forward to tomorrow? Tomorrow's the big day on the show. Like, what? And people say, I'm looking forward to this talk. Or I'm oh, so you're really doing your, you're doing your thing. Yeah, I have yeah, to. Thank man. God you, you were brought up there. <laughs> well, if it wasn't me, it was the other editor, and he because he was at a funeral. That's why I didn't go. Uh, but, <clears throat> um, uh, yeah, so then I'm like, you know, I, I just say to people, like, you know, what are you looking forward to tomorrow? Oh, that's great. Yeah, yeah, me too. Blah, blah. So I said to this guy, well, what are you looking forward to tomorrow? And he's like, um, sometimes I like to go camping and I like to wake up just before sunrise and I'll get to a nice little vantage spot. He said this without thinking, right? And he goes, I get to a nice vantage spot and I'll just... I'll just watch the sunrise and those colors are so rich and beautiful. There's nothing like it. There's no, yeah. it's those colors are wonderful. And I'm like, oh yeah. And then he goes, why do you get out of bed in the morning? And I'm like, oh, I see what's happened. Well, and, the guy. Yeah. so I'm like, well, immediately it would be the event. That's, mm. that's what gets me out of the bed mm. at least tomorrow. And more broadly, friends and family, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> and he's yeah. like, yeah, yeah. And then he got up and got another meal. So he's on plate four. Yeah, he's on plate four. Wait a second. Some people haven't had seconds yet. <laughs> Hang on. Is he part? Is he? Was he's he? A, yeah, he's an attendee. Oh my god! I thought yeah, the whole yeah. thing you're building up to was this he guy wasn't just there. staying no, at the no. hotel. He works. For, no, he works for a company that we won't name. Okay, that is that makes it that makes it funnier. I think. Yeah, actually. he's fully just part of it. He's the just, fact, ah, fuck it. No, nah, I can't hear anything. I have to go eat. God, what? Well, I can't believe he thought. You, the host, was going to just come over to him. Uh, this fucking... What would you call him? Slovenly. <laughs> Slo- this, not slovenly. This slob of a man. After <laughs> three dinners. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but what gets you out of bed in the morning? Yeah, well, because cause I, yeah, I was asking him what, what he gets up tomorrow specifically, and mm. he just gave me a broad answer. Mm. But, um, yeah, it, it, it literally doesn't stop. He kept... I think he had, maybe had five meals. And at the end of the day, I was like, what the fuck? Come on, man. And then, um, like he, to be fair, his hearing was a bit bad because then he was like saying some comments to me during the speeches, which were completely audible to other people, and I just had to avoid eye contact, right? Right, right. And then there was a. And the speeches, night one again. Night one, yeah. Okay. And then day two, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't around for this, but then my mate told me where he's, um, he left one of the seminars early, right? He left, he left the room early, and then, yeah, my colleague goes, is everything all right, man? You know, you're, there's one room. There's one room where all the seminars are. So is everything all right? And he goes, God, I just, my tummy really hurts. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. And then he goes, oh, maybe, it, maybe, maybe you're hungry. Try eating something. <laughs> and it was just wonderful. And then there That's was this funny. other bit where he was like playing around with a um, Prima juice box. Beautiful. And kept stabbing into it as well, and like it distracted the the speaker. Yeah, it's just it's just incredible value. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I think it's probably dinners two through five to something like the next day. Did he end up getting to the sunrise at any at like on the? Were, no. Were you able to follow up with him? And he, did he? <laughs> no, did he find I, a way to get to a sunrise? I didn't talk to him the next day. Yeah. Um, I can't imagine he was because he's stuck in the airport. Yeah. I mean, like, yeah, it's just... Oh, you were just in the airport? Pretty much. Like, the the hotel was within five minutes. Like, you could oh, no you could walk to the hotel from the airport. So, uh, That's why we wanted to make a trip. How old trek. was this guy? Oh, uh, like, close to 60. 
Oh, that's not maybe like, over sixty. Even still, around the sixty mark is. I don't think it's old enough to be acting like that. Yeah, but maybe. Yeah, yeah. Fucking well, I've got his number. Oh yeah, <laughs> give I'll, him a buzz right I'll now. Ask him. Yeah. Give him a buzz after the break. <laughs> um, what else could we possibly talk about, Sean? I feel like. Well, yeah. do you want to? Is there anything? Are there any holes you want to fill from? I don't think I'm, I. Don't, me and Micah really went through what we did in the Gold So Coast. good. Uh, I've got a question. Are the trams that much better? They're not part of the traffic, so they just don't <laughs> so it's make a train. Traffic. It's <laughs> no, a train. No, it's next. It's on the road. It's like those Australian, on a the Australian Open trams, like one of the. You know how there's all those tram lines that just aren't part of traffic. Yeah, yeah. Just imagine. Yeah, imagine if the tram was good. Yeah, that's yeah, exactly yeah. what it is. It's exactly the same situation. It's a it's small next to train. The road. It's a small train. It doesn't get in the way of anyone. Mm. Everyone doesn't get in the way of it. Yeah, you just, it's just it's seamless. Second question, you said the bus driver was great and you just went on and said, asked him a question. Were you asking to fare evade or were you asking for directions? So first bus we got on, Marco <laughs> tapped his go card, which is the version of Mike. It's like Smith up there. Um, and Marco had zero on his go card, which means, but you can still tap on with zero. Yeah, you can do that you in, in the negative. Melbourne. Uh, or if you, I think even if you had negative. Okay, it's not a competition. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I... Went on and I was like, Do you, can I buy a ticket on the bus? And the guy was like, no, no, get yeah, on the bus, get on the bus. That's good crap there, though. Yeah. And then sound. the few buses we got on after that, the guys were just like, no, no one was tapping on. Mm. But then the bus driver's just like, what, what am I going to, like, mm. who gives a fuck? It doesn't change my, mm. doesn't change my um, bottom line. Mm. Uh, so it was good. That was good. And then even the guys that worked on the train, they had ticket inspectors the last day. They were pretty helpful with everything. Um... But but yeah, tram tram every the, the PT was better there. Yeah, the right, on the street right. PT was God, much better. That sucks. Yeah, it yeah. sucks for us. Yeah, it sucks for us. Well, I mean, I'm I'm here. Yeah. Um, all right, and then third story at the top. Uh, I got a lot of Qantas frequent flyer points, and by yeah. a lot, I mean like, you know, you can get a free flight for three hundred thousand Qantas points, right? And how much how much is that? So in cash, my flight. Ah, fuck, I don't know how much is a fly. You can fly it. How many points do you get for a dollar? spent it's 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 such a weird system like oh is it per product yeah and then it also matters on how busy and like what time of the way it's it's very strange like my oh, my really flight shit. home right was i got 800 Qantas points but the flight wasn't 800 bucks it's like sydney and melbourne you can get like a couple hundred right yeah yeah my flight home was oh wait so 300k that's probably in the ballpark of like 20,000 go to london spent, though Oh yeah, yeah, oh. yeah. So that's that's the Wait, real. That's not, that's not too bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like if you fly with Qantas a lot, yeah. you can get a free trip to Europe, right? Yeah. But it's then shitty. if you add up all the times you had flown with Jetstar instead mm. or whatever it is, then what's the difference between the Qantas and the Jetstar ticket? You'd probably just buy a fucking ticket there to you Europe. Go. But there anyway, you go. for someone like me who's just say like, I'm going like the odd work trip, right? I've got eight thousand five hundred Qantas points, mm. which is enough to get myself really difficultly a couple of bottles of wine from wine.quantus.com.au oh you you stunner we talk about bad websites this is the worst website (laughs) of all time and no one cares no one's going to fix it it doesn't matter right because i think i might be the only person who's ever been on the website yeah you click filter by low to high because they're like oh we can get you this like beautiful pen fold that'll be three hundred thousand Qantas points i was Mm. like oh look don't want to thank you but i don't want to get that uh sort price low to high, low to high yeah. and then they're like mm, now nah, we'll just keep the featured ones at the top and we actually no nah, no nah, we, we we i'm sorry we can't do that <laughs> okay filter high to low yeah here i'm in oh i got 20 pages not gonna happen filter low to high nah nah <laughs> nah nah so then i was i just had to like take a stab in the dark and i think i got a bottle of gin for oh, eight thousand Qantas points so okay. if that helps your maths at all it does help my maths i was doing calculations <laughs> as you went along I, I'm, I'm thinking the people that work at Qantas who are like i don't know part of their tech team mm. i reckon you went onto the shop and they're like <laughs> one of the workers was like uh <laughs> boss you're gonna want to come see this <laughs> and then like the boss comes over and like leans over the table and he's like <laughs> and they're looking at you like oh god what do we do <laughs> and then like sort low to high and then like <laughs> while you're like hmm it's not working there and the other <laughs> and like oh god what do we do what do we do they're on their phone dragging and dropping by the price yeah. <laughs> um yeah. Yeah, and all their non-alcoholic spirits are half price at the moment. So if you've you know. got the Qantas points to spend, <laughs> and but you get the thirst for them. These points also expire every year. 
This is oh, this is getting worse. I this know. deal is getting worse by the year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you need to fly every week for work to get that trip, that free trip. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. And you need to spend twenty k to get to London. Yeah, which yeah. Which costs <laughs> way less than that. <laughs> yeah. You just save. Yeah, yeah. And it's but it's great for businesses because if you're just like claiming that in the business, then your personal trip's free. Mm, it's true. but it's such a yeah yeah. There's, yeah. there's people who get it. Yeah, I've been to the Qantas Lounge. A- AMA. <laughs> <laughs> um, most famous person you saw? No. Nah, nah. <laughs> I was at the Cool and Gutter ah, right. Qantas so Lounge. Okay. <laughs> nah, yeah. I, nah, no, no famous people. Okay. I feel like they've got their own Qantas Lounge that's more elite than the Qantas Lounge. Yeah, you'd assume so. Hmm. Um, all right, well, that's not the only reason we came oh. to this pod, is it, Sean? <laughs> You'd bloody think it. <laughs> yeah, um, the NBA Finals. Uh, this this is I'm really excited for this. It's Same. it's Friday. This podcast might be going up tonight or tomorrow, being Thursday. Yeah. Um, it's fucking. I'm I've, I've I've been writing down like predictions. I've been thinking about this since you know we messaged a couple of hours ago. Let's do a pod tonight instead of tomorrow. I've been thinking a lot about like what I'm gonna say, and I I purposely left the prediction bit blank because I I'm going into this with a loose prediction but I can very much be swayed uh, where do yeah. you want where do you want to start with this um, I want to know how did the Celtics guard Luca mm. and what I actually want to know is <laughs> what what are, what are you up in the air with because I said Celtics in seven last night and you have yet to make your prediction what are your reasons for not making a prediction in favor of the Mavericks yeah First of all, Danny Lou had a good point on his podcast where he said, "If it if you're in a game seven, you just have to assume the Mavs are going to win any game seven they're in because of most recent history with yeah. obviously like the the Suns game seven, um, the no, no the no this is a big closeout game, yeah, this yeah, big yeah. closeout game yeah. is the yeah the occasion. Um, the reasons why the Mavs would beat the the Celtics is." Like, Luca's just done this against Jaden McDaniels, mm. Nikhil Alexander-Walker, the Defensive Player of the Year center. And, like, yeah, the Celtics fucking incredible defense. But they're all kind of not that good individually, right? Like, you've got the Jays, who, like, defensively, like, well, I mean, this is a very hard conversation to have, but defensively, would you rather the role, the 3 and D role player in Jaden McDaniels and then the Defensive Player of the Year, or would you rather one of the Jays or Puzingas guarding a Luca pick and roll? But that's that's not going to be what Luke is looking for. Luca is just going to look for the weakest link, and whether that's because uh, he, he he kept trying to find Mike Conley and post him up or just shoot right over him. Mm. So he's going to look for Derek White and just shoot right over him. Or if there's any second of the game that Sam Hauser is out there or, heaven forbid, Luke Cornett and Xavier Tillman, right? Like that's, I think every single one of those guys is just purely unplayable. I think Joe Mazzulla, if he's learned anything from not being able to adjust in the playoffs, then obviously having this bit of a you know, renaissance and a coaching thing. He obviously went to Man City and like spent time with Pep Guardiola and learned <laughs> yeah, how to, yeah, he did. Jesus. And learned, time, learned like how to make adjustments in game and whatever, whatever. But hopefully Joe Mazzulla goes, oh, I can actually only play six people in this game. Mm-hmm. And Luca's going to sit for three minutes and I'll cram all my fucking rest minutes into those Luca sitting minutes. But... What was your question? Your question was how how do the Mavs win? In favor win? of the Mavs, there's, so uh, there's ambiguity. Like yeah. it could go either way. Mm. If it goes the Mavs way, what? Do you, how do you envision that happening? Uh, is it what you've said so far? The Celtics just aren't deep enough to throw bodies at Luca. No, it's it's if the Mavs win, it's that Luca finds a mismatch, whether that's Derek White or whoever it may be. And then the Celtics say, fuck, we have to double. And as soon as you're doubling, <coughs> Kyrie Irving going against like a defender trying to get out on him, he's just going to win that matchup. Mm. That's how the Mavs win. So it's all going to come down to do the Celtics have to double and do the Celtics have to pre-switch and make all these adjustments to get Al Horford off him or whoever it may be. Mm. I just don't. like Derek, Derek White's too good. Mm. I just don't think... I, yeah, so I guess I'm leaning Celtics to start, yeah. start the convo. What so do you I'm think? leaning Celtics. I think... Sure, Jaden McDaniels is probably the best perimeter defender. Like, if he were to be on the Celtics, he'd probably mm. be the best perimeter defender. But, like, um, all the Celtics' wings and guards are much denser mm. than Jaden McDaniels is. And, like, Luka, Luka isn't, like, going to, like, run rings around you. Yeah. He has ways of getting around you and, like, opening up an open lane for him. But there's just more bodies to bump against him. 
And I think, I don't think that, I think the Celtics are going to do them, you know, Missoula's going to have these fucking weird press conferences. <laughs> but they're just going to make it a math thing. Yeah. And just be like, all right, we are going to put two on Luca. And if Derek Jones Jr. wants to shoot 15 threes, mm. then we can probably live with that. Um, because... Yeah, I don't think that Jones Jr. has proved himself as like a volume yeah. point shooter. I still think yeah. you help off of him. Yeah, you, and you help off of him. He's gotten really good, and so has PJ Washington. Like when they do run out and close him out, they're both really good at attacking the paint. And then it's like, okay, well, now Paul Zingas is there and he might be injured, as opposed to Rudy Gobert. And Rudy Gobert, like, did a great job defending the rim against uh, Derek Jones Jr. Like, Derek Jones Jr. is a bit player who hit a couple of nice layups, right? Mm. So it's like, is Puzzing is going to be the one to do it when Rudy couldn't? Because you, you know, we just know that Rudy's better. So I guess that's, I'm also leaning Celtics because of Derek Jones Jr. Because if he doesn't hit his shots, then... Then he's Derek Jones Jr. Then he's Derek Jones Jr. And like Tim Hardaway Jr., if he comes on because you're like, fuck, someone needs to hit a shot. Mm. Well, then the Jays are just going to target him. And then you've just mm. given the Jays a hole to, <laughs> to attack. Uh, so you... You said something before about Daniel LaRue on, a pod, on his podcast. Mm-hmm. Shout out. Um, <laughs> in a closeout game, like the Mavs have showed so many times that whatever, they're going to be the ones to win it. Did, was there also mention of that the Celtics have showed so many times yeah. in a meaningful moment they're going to crumble? Was that was that part of the chat at all? No, nah, they, they were saying... They, they did talk about it and they were just like, look, you know, the Celtics have had to play bad teams mm. and what we're making fun of them there, but then they've also closed out a lot of close Indiana wins. Like, and that's, that's a Indiana team without Tyrese Helbert yeah. for a lot of time. But they, they still closed out and swept, right? Yeah. Um, and then you're not going to blame them for, like, who'd they play in the first round? Uh, the Heat. Yeah, with, without, without Jimothy. You can't blame them for that. But then uh, just... Yeah, you know, all the memes are, it's like Luku coming out of the West and it's like, you know, a scene from a war and then Jay, the Jays yeah, yeah. coming out of the East, right? Maybe there's something to that about just being, like, just ready for the intensity that it's going to bring. The Mavs are. Yeah. I think that the the rest is going to be huge for everyone, it's, mm. but, like, mainly Luka. Mm. Like, Luka went from playing a game every second day, every second or third day. Yeah. And, like, Dort was just, like... He was overmatched, so he just committed, like, non... Angel Reese's mates fouls. <laughs> yeah. Non, um, non-basketball non play fouls. Yeah. Rudy and McDaniels did it all series long. Yeah, yeah. So, every day of rest Luke can, can, Luke can get, he's coming from such a lower, mm. like, point of deplete, depleted energy. Mm. And I don't think that the Celtics will will make that, like, will incorporate that in their game. I don't think that that's part of their DNA. They'll just play him straight up and, you know, do their best job and shake his hand in the face <laughs> and, you know, sing Kumbaya. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, if they weren't able to close out the Pacers or, like, you know, they, they got to huge leads, the Pacers would, you know, claw them back. But, yeah, if, if it does come to crunch time, like, I don't trust the Celtics. Mm. And uh, if they weren't able to... If they weren't able to get one or two... Well, th- nah, you know what? If they weren't able to get three easy wins in the first three series, and why are they going to do it against Luca and yeah, Kyrie, yeah. a team that not only has their best player, which mm. they haven't come up against other than two games against the Pacers or three games against yeah, the Pacers, yeah. um, and then also their second best player, who's like not that much worse than the teams who they've already played mm. f- first best player. Mm. You know what I mean? Like yeah, this, is the, yeah. this is a much higher jump up in quality of opponent for the Celtics than it is for the Mavericks yeah. but I'm I'm definitely leaning towards Celtics yeah like it's just so hard not to pick them yeah and and you said before you were like you know if the Celtics say fuck we have to double and then you're like okay Derrick Jones Jr. hit the shot or PJ Washington hit the <laughs> shot what if they what if they just go in with the philosophy of okay let's not double for four games right and let's just single cover him is Luca really going to score 50 plus points to like really make up for the fact that his pass isn't working? Is he going to score 50 plus because they're just saying, okay, just single cover. Okay, he beats Derek White in a post up and then he shoots over Drew Holiday in the next position. It's like, oh, okay, this is when a coach would double. But is he really going to just keep scoring because then the next play down, okay, Luca's hot, but they're still great defenders. Mm. Um, and is Luke, would Luca be able to score enough by himself? Seems like a bit of a stupid question. Like <laughs> the only reason he he didn't score twenty points in every single quarter against the um, the Wolves is that they just kept sending doubles and just tried to get the ball out of his hands. Mm. I just 
Yeah, and I don't know. There's and one thing I've written down here is that the the most recent example of like success that's really worked against Luca is that the last the last time Luca was in the playoffs was the 2022 Western Conference Finals where they lost to the Golden State Warriors and the Warriors were playing Andrew Wiggins, um, Clay Thompson, and Gary Payton on him and Steve Kerr was just like every possession down we're doing something different like you know mm, Luke, Luke would dribble down Gary Payton picking him up full court and he's like fuck you know this sucks you know a la Lou Dort a couple mm. of weeks ago. And then another play down, they're like, okay, Draymond's starting on him because we know that he's like, let me get us, let me just call a screen so I can get rid of Gary Payton, right? So then Steve Kerr goes, right, you're up, Draymond. Draymond meets him at the half court, and all of a sudden the screen's kind of neutered because then Draymond just switches right onto the screen. And then, you know, Steph at a worst case is there, but then, yeah, there's, there's heaps of other defenders to come in. And, and Jonathan Kaminga didn't play like this series before against Memphis, but then St- Steve Kerr was like, hey, I'm going to give you like, three possessions a night just mm. to be long and just get in, get in the face of, of, of Doncic and the Celtics can do that the Celtics have yeah. the bodies and they're actually like much better bodies than like GP and Kaminga um, they can actually do that to Luca. so I think you do sort of just have to like you sort of have to single cover him and if Luca can beat you then I guess you lose the basketball game but yeah. that's not going to happen they're going to double and then you know, it's much easier to ask guys like Terry Jones Jr. to hit the shots but this is, this, is a, this is a good finals. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, so I did look up... Well, I was just doing a little bit of side research as you were talking just then. Uh, and very nice. Uh, and you said, well, if they single cover Luca, how many is he going to get? Mm. The Hawks tried that at the start of the year and he had 73. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. And then I think at 64 points, they started to double team him. And he only had nine the rest of the way. Uh, and he also had seven assists in that game, mm. and they won. Uh, and they didn't have Kyrie Irving. Yeah. Uh, and I think those are all um, important context because it's like, okay, they have. He has been like, let me just shoot every time. Mm. He's done it, and you know, Josh Green's had twenty points. Imagine if that's Kyrie getting the Josh Green shots, yeah, and Josh Green's yeah, getting yeah. The, the Tim Hardaway shots. And they won. Like they've proven that they can win do- doing it. That they can win doing it. Uh, Hawks obviously way worse than the Celtics are, mm. but I think without Kyrie, that's a it's a pretty good um, a case study. Mm. For what, what you're going to do if you are are going to cover Luca one on one? Yeah, it will be an awesome finals. Uh, I I just I don't think that the Mavericks have. I think the Mavericks match up well with them offensively. I think Luca's going to like just. It's going to be awesome to watch yeah, them in the yeah, finals. Yeah. But I don't think that the Mavericks have good matchups for the Celtics defensively. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what do you reckon? Yeah, that's, uh, I think that's that, That's where it comes down to me. Like, if I'm just looking at Dallas's offense, I'm like, fuck, I, I sort of want to say Mavs just to go for them, right? Just yeah. just to have this, like, well, I, I'm going for the, for the Mavs anyway, but just to just to say that I'm going for them but on defense it's like yeah how do they stop the Jays because like, mm-hmm. the Jays have much more holes to attack whether that be Curry Irving who's going to be on the court for 45 plus minutes yeah Derek Jones Jr I guess he's he's going to be the primary defender on Jason Tatum mm-hmm. <clears throat> if they try and cheat any uh, Jaden Hardy um, Dante Exum or Tim Hardaway Jr minutes and like Hardy had a good series last series mm-hmm. and it was very much he was just the third guard the first guard off the bench being the third guard just emulating the drive and kick game that Luca and, and yeah. Kyrie were doing but like if he's out there um, instead of uh, just hiding him on Mike Conley or one of the 3 and D Jaden McDaniels it's like oh you've actually got the two J's um, you've got sort of a, an old man-ish in Drew Holiday who can post him up. Mm. It's, yeah, it's... You can't really cheat those minutes. So, mm. like, every single second Luca and, and Kyrie aren't on the court, and, like, that's definitely not going to happen at the same time. But just when whenever there's the, the first guard off the bench there, I just, yeah, it's it, it's not looking good. And then you say, if, if, you have, if you have to make a decision defensively, you say, okay, we'll bring in Dante Exum. Then Dante Exum hasn't played too well. I mean, no, got... don't bring him in. <laughs> yeah, save him for the Olympics, but... <laughs> I don't... Yeah, there's... The there's... boomers have called up the Mavs and asked him to manage him for the Olympics. There's heaps of issues for, for the Mavs here. Uh, there are. I think one one thing that's in their favour is that with Porzingis and Horford, it means you can you can keep going with the Gafford and Lively mm. rotation. If the Celtics do want to go small, then so let's like let's go through the Mavericks players that aren't centers that you want to play: Luca, Kyrie, Derek Jones Jr., PJ Washington, Josh Green. 
He's he's been playing quite bad, but I guess you sort of have to. <laughs> he will look the least bad on D. Yeah, yeah. He will yeah. fit in the most, I think, yeah, on yeah. the court. Jaden Hardy. Yeah, I, I don't think he can because if if he's not scoring at like 150 points per possession. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, 150 offensive yeah, rate. Yeah. Like you can't. Yeah. Okay. Tim Hardaway is no. getting dimps, dimps he, yeah, he doesn't hit threes. Dante Exum. Yeah, I mean, like, I think I think we will see Exum a lot more than we have in yeah. these playoffs. Yeah. Okay. So then. The That's, Mavericks really have to bank on the Celtics playing Porzingis and Horford, which they probably will. Mm. So they can also play Gaff and Lively. That just opens up the rotation a little bit more. Um, but but there's just so many there's so many more options. I think the Celtics can go with. There are so many more scenarios that the Celtics can win mm. in than the Mavericks can. Yeah, win. yeah, yeah. But if there is someone to figure it out, is Luca? Oh, actually, this is something I've been thinking about, and I keep forgetting. So I'm going to say it now. The um, Jason Tatum, he, he like. I, do, I feel like every time I watch the Celtics in the in the in the postseason, all he was doing was getting to the free throw line. Yeah, yeah. And I think the Mavericks are going to go from defending Carl Anthony Towns at the Timber <laughs> place for the Timberwolves, <laughs> um, who pretty much has the same approach to getting to the rim as Jason Tatum. Yeah. Like, I'm going to flail. Maybe yeah. Cass flails look a little bit more obvious, yeah. but I'm going to generate all of the contact mm. and. The refs do a good job with Cat. They don't do a good job with Tatum. Mm. Like Tatum gets one of the best whistles. I've like ever he sticks seen. his arms out as long as they can, and yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. A classic basketball move. Yeah. <laughs> um, so staying out of foul trouble will also be a big thing. Maybe that's where you see the Josh Green minutes. Maybe you see Josh Green and Dante Exum get six fouls a game yeah. uh, against Jason Tatum. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I think that's going to be an, an adjustment as well. Hopefully the refs don't fuck that up because yeah. there's so many good parts about this series, and hopefully we aren't just watching. Tatum cakewalk to the to the ring to the rim, yeah, yeah, yeah. but um, and and the counter to that is you know lively and gaff pinch in, but uh, on the Mavs on the Celtic side of things you want to see Derek Jones Jr. take fifteen threes. On the Mavs side of things you probably don't want to see Horford take fifteen threes. Yeah, like he's yeah. just been taken like this. I I I can feel like I can envision like a five of nine from three mm. playoff game mm. that Horford's had with the Celtics. We same tell you a Olympic game. <laughs> yeah, but like more than once. Yeah, yeah and like yeah. Derek White, same deal. Maybe yeah. Drew Holiday's the guy you help off of, but yeah, they're all know, good. Hey? Yeah, they're <laughs> yeah, all like yeah. there's there's so much shooting. There's so much shooting they can fall back on that you yeah. can't really help off of them. Yeah, there's a reason they wanted to. They won sixty games or whatever, fifty nine or how many? Sixty four and eighteen. Oh, fuck. And genuinely, the, I want to say the last. I want to say the last 40 games of the season. We're trying, yeah. First six minutes, they were like, let's see if we can figure this out. Last 42, mm. let's just win or lose yeah, this game. Yeah, let's yeah. just coast. So, yeah, I so said at the start, I sort of had an idea, and it was going to be picking the Mavs in six or seven, just because, yeah, like, best player on the court, they're definitely going to have the best player on the court, because right now the best player for the Celtics has been Larry Bird Trophy Award D, uh, Jalen Brown. Um, but I th- yeah, I think I'm gonna say like Celtics in six or fewer. Six or fewer. Yeah, because I right. just yeah that that game seven, Luca, and the it's it's gonna the, this is gonna change a lot. I think both both coaches are gonna come out and play eight players, maybe nine players, and by game four, that's gonna be six, maybe five, right? Because <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. the rotations are just gonna get fucking yeah. snipped also I feel like Missoula and Kid have some sort of like telekinesis where they're both kind of like they're both like psychos yeah but I feel like there's gonna be like this unspoken rule like you just play your five I'll play my five yeah all right let's just, just or, so they're all the same amount of tired yeah or, or Jason Kidd will walk over and be like hey I'm actually gonna sneak a Dwight Power minute in here can you bring out Luke Cornett and fucking <laughs> Sam Hauser yeah um, that's gonna be like actually like pretty bad telly like where for the for the last minute of the first quarter when they sneak in Sam Hauser and it's like okay well this is anyway yeah start um, running the ads yeah <laughs> yeah literally like um, yeah just yeah the, the Celtics don't have the best player in the series but they might have oh, Kyrie Irving's been playing well and Kyrie Irving defensive renaissance been doing a good job individually that doesn't really help here because he's mm. guarding one of the guards like they're not going to put him on one of the Jays and say hey because you've done well your reward is a taller player who can bully you right yeah Oh, I just like I'm going to be going for the Mavs. Who isn't? Yeah, Celtics fans. Um, 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, I'm, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say Celtics in six, and because the Celtics, I'd love to see a Nathan Buckley here. Well, with the Michael Jordan award. Okay. <laughs> well, I was gonna say Celtics <laughs> in seven, Luca for the Finals MVP. True. In seven, you can. But yeah, they'll yeah. give it to Tatum. They actually, they actually hate giving it to the other team. Hey, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Like the LeBron Iggy one. Yeah, insane. Yeah, it'll be, it'll be the Tom Thibodeau Coach of the Year. Mm. It'll be like, oh no, Luca was definitely the best player in the yeah, final series, yeah, but yeah, Jason yeah. Tatum is the one that has his award. Yeah, yeah. The the Smith. Um, yeah, I'm gonna say Jalen Brown. Okay. Jason Tatum will have the most empty triple double in like game five, right? Yeah. And it'll be like, fuck, you know, the star stepped up in, in game five. <laughs> yeah, just starting two over this year. <laughs> so, yeah, just. Oh, man, this is this is going to be fun. Why don't you come back to you? Can, I feel like you can reserve the right to edit. Maybe you can like drop a TQ. I get a mulligan a after. A TQT. The thing is, I, I think that, um, I th- yeah, that's a good idea, but I think that. The Celtics could full well win game two, uh, the first two games. But if they lose one of the first two games, the Mavs might run away with it. Yeah. Like, the Celtics have to defend home court. So, you know how they're like, oh, game one's a feeling out game. It's just, I, I, I'm actually not buying this shit. <laughs> it's, such, it's such a saving face thing to do. Whoever would be like, who would be happy to burn a game in the playoffs? Yeah, yeah. And definitely. then they, then you're only allowed to lose two out of the next four game, out of the next six games. Yeah. And you've won... L- You've lost one out of your last one. Yeah. Um, but, but the the Mavs are only one of game one, I think, in the last two playoff series. Last series. That was the first time they, they, they won oh, game no one. Oh, shit. Yeah. Well, I think, I think one thing that the Celtics have done a good job of, while they've been a, like pretty streaky throughout the postseason, mm-hmm. I think um, they haven't been playing from behind. And I think that, that... I think the Mavs should be treating game one as their Super Bowl. Yeah. To be like... Okay, we need to win. Game one just, is their state of origin, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> we need to um, <laughs> we need to win game one because oh, so just for the mental side of things to see mm. them the Celtics playing from behind because then it's desperation. Then they yeah. have to win game two. Yeah, They've yet to be yeah. in a position where they have to win yeah. game X. Yeah, because yeah. they're always playing with that like mm. you know a few points in the bag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I think yeah, game one should be their game seven. So. Would you would you say that whoever wins game one wins the series? Even though this mm. might be the, the eight player rotation game as opposed to seven, which will be the five player rotation game? No, I don't think I don't think who wins game one can win the series. Yeah. I think if or Okay, if the Celtics win game one, I think both teams can win the series. Yeah, if the yeah, Mavs yeah. win game one, I actually think the, only the Mavs can win. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. But then that leaves the permutation open for if Celtics win, Mavs might still win. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, whatever. Like, we're, <laughs> we've got so many asterisks. Asterisks are. <laughs> yeah. Um, in playoff series, Jason Kidd is five and one. Oh wow! Yeah. <coughs> oh, they missed the playoffs last year. How good is that? Out, man. <laughs> Jesus! You guys talked about it a bit where they they missed the playoffs and <clears throat> traded with OKC to get from mm. twelve to ten and got lively. It's, yeah, it's looking good. Um, mm. They've and I don't know if you saw again on Dunked on Prime. They did like who had the best uh, trade deadline, and it's mm. like you know the Mavs trade deadline statistically they looked at winning percentage before and after when like everyone's healthy mm. um, and knocked off like the garbage time games, and it was like the the Mavs had the the third biggest leap or something. Yeah, man, we the last time we had a, a you and me pod mm. was it that was right after the Mavs trades. Yeah, it might have been. Maybe that maybe four yeah, it was would have been four weeks ago, but maybe if we do an a foreman then we Ah, no, we've had two. We've had one since then. But we we were we were right after I don't think that they'd even played a game yet. Yeah, we we were right after and I I remember I said, because then I talked about it on a pod with Mark that um yeah, I, I at the time, I was like, "This is crazy." They should hold on to their assets mm. because, then in the off season, they're going to unlock another first round pick that they can then trade for hopefully a better third star. Yeah, but yeah, this is totally like <coughs> if they lose these finals, it's still been a good trade. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they made the finals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's and it's sort of like I was talking about this with friend of the program Leandro because it's like, yeah, who are you rooting for? And it's like, okay, in terms of this is during the conference finals. In terms of like style of like the way the team was built okay well 
I, I would like to root for the Mavs because then it's like the ne- the next trade deadline. If you're a team that's on the fringe, we're like this year. The Warriors were like, oh, should we make a trade? Oh no, let maybe just hold on to the guys. Or if you're whoever it is, they say, oh, let's just hold on a little bit. Now every single team is going to head into the next trade deadline, regardless what happens. Mm-hmm. And go, oh well, this team just upgraded a little bit. Yeah, and they fucking it just changed their basketball team, and they're a yeah. sixty win team after it. So ten, and the last time that happened was in twenty nineteen when the Raptors traded for Marcus Ole and Drew Mullen at the trade deadline. Um, and then I, I remember at the time thinking like, oh, you can't bring bring a starting player in mm. in the middle of the season and still win a title. But it was like, if you get the right player like Marcus Ole, then yeah, he's just going to know exactly what to do and knows how to win, right? Yeah. So maybe next trade deadline, we're going to see a little bit of a trend in the NBA where instead of guys sort of holding out for that star and it's obviously going to be a little bit harder to get another star with the second apron concerns, maybe we're going to see a market where it's like, it's, it's not necessarily a, a seller's market but it's a seller's market for if you've got someone on a good contract and if you've got someone who can help a team a little bit. So then maybe we talk about the off season or the following off season where it's like, okay, is the the value a little bit going to be those mid tier contracts where it's like, have you got a gaff on a good deal for four years? Sweet. That's he's going to get a first round pick now. Or if you've got PJ Washington where it's like, Oh, should we have paid him like four for 72 or whatever his number is? Oh, we actually get a first room there. And then the teams are going to be more than happy to trade for those guys because they've seen the success of Dallas. That's, that's, that's cool. And just complete opposite to the (laughs) Phoenix Suns who have said, no, we're getting all minimums and three big dudes. Yeah. Um, I think I was, I think I was not quite bullish, but mildly bullish on the Washington. Yeah, it's Yeah. Uh, on the Washington and Gafford pickups. I also think there's something about being a really good role player on a really bad team coming into yeah. a situation like this. Like what what play does Gaff or Washington take off? Like they've been they've been sitting in the in the in the cellars of the league for mm. in the C cellars of the <laughs> league for four years now. Yeah. And now they now they have now they've played like it's still a new toy for them they've played like 40 games in a winning team yeah, after yeah. playing what 300 <laughs> yeah team. yeah so it's like oh shit like it's not always like this mm. um also <clears throat> so Kyrie playing against his old team the Celtics Porzingis playing against his old team the yeah, Mavs yeah. also um the Nets have traded <laughs> <laughs> Kyrie to the Mavs and the Nets traded which which pick oh, the was picks, no. which pick was Jalen uh, Brown? One of Tatum or was, Brown? I think it was Jalen Brown. Yeah, one of Jalen Brown to the thingo in a season they went what thirty two and fifty. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. That's a pretty funny storyline. Yeah, to, yeah. To that's, keep the it's follow. also the former Grant Williams teams. <laughs> true. <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah, His yeah. two most previous teams. Yeah. Oh, no <laughs> shit. Damn. Um, I think that trumps both of mine. <laughs> the do you like? What do you think about the Kyrie Irving going back to Boston stuff? Like. He's different now. He is different. There was a funny quote. They're doing like the pre, um, the pre-finals media stuff, and like he had a quote where he was like, "Yeah, I'm having the most fun I've ever had in Dallas, and like I can't wait to resign. Like this is uh, this is the best basketball." Suit. And it's like, "Oh well, you actually said that to the Celtics yeah. in the middle of the court with a microphone in your hand, and yeah. then just completely went back on your word." Yeah, you reckon you'll get booed? Oh yeah, <laughs> oh, you being funny. Do you reckon Luke will get cheered? <laughs> I, I, he's getting a. Ooh, I don't know. Yeah, the Celtics fans suck. He's definitely going to get booed. They're going to boo. Like no, no, Luke will, Luke will get cheered by them. <laughs> I, I understand your joke, but I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking like during the during the player introductions, you know, when yeah. they typically pay uh, March of the Empire or whatever. Um, Some Ned Sheeran song. <laughs> yeah, it's Ned Sheeran song. I watched it yesterday the other day. Have you seen that? Who? Yesterday. What? It's no. about a, a singer who's a little bit like down in his dumps and going nowhere and then this freak accident happens and everyone in the world forgets who the Beatles are so he just starts singing their songs and gets famous <laughs> off oh it. Oh my God. Fucking Ed Sheeran's in it. No shit. Yeah, Is he's like... No, no, nah, nah, he's, he's, he plays himself but... Um, yeah, he hears Hey Jude for the first time and he goes, mm. Matt, I think it would be great if you changed that to Hey Dude. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck so you, bad. Fuck off. <laughs> Fuck off. All right, what's your prediction? Well, <clears throat> well we've done that. Yeah, but you haven't written it down. I, oh. I forgot it. Celtics in seven, Luca, the actual finals MVP, mm. but um, yeah, Jay. Jason Tatum will yeah, have the yeah. award. Wouldn't it be cool if uh, Drew Holiday got it? 
That would yeah, be cool. If you're going to give it to a Godala for guarding LeBron while he averages 40, 12, and 8, then you can give it to, to for Justin, uh, Drew Holiday for being... Wow, that's nice. In inverted commas. Yeah, inverted commas and in the streets. The streets finals in the, the streets. <laughs> what, what does Shaq call it the, the, in the MF Hall of Fame? There's the Basketball Hall of Fame and the Motherfucker <laughs> Hall of Fame or something like that. Um, yeah, we bad. haven't talked about Pro Ziggins. Pro Ziggins? Pro Ziggins. <laughs> Yeah, so we we talked about it before the pod. We're assuming he's fully healthy and playing seven games. There's been a lot of. Uh, it seems like he's going to play. Yeah, it seems like I the, saw him warm up. <laughs> <laughs> but what was it? He he did everything. He's been doing everything with the team for like the past week. Yeah, and he's then got he like a week off, stayed yeah. after practice to do some one on one or three on three drills, and then after that did shoot around, mm. and then and then another report came out today saying like yeah he's gonna he's gonna play and but all the, all throughout it's been like oh Missoula's not gonna announce anything until yeah. right before and it's like you, it's good sort of tactically yeah I guess yeah. but like it's pretty obvious he's gonna play also yeah. it's not like the as if the maps are like not preparing for that <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. already yeah and the the preparation is hey crash the boards more oh no there's actually a seven foot laugh in maybe just run back on defense <laughs> yeah um Oh, I was going to say something. Uh, talking about basketball. I'm talking about basketball, yeah, laughing, um, gangbanger. Uh, Kyrie's return to Celtics. Nah. Luca getting booed. Celtics fans. Jason, uh, Drew Holiday MVP. Finals MVP. Was that what we, we were talking about that? Yeah. No, that's uh, that's a good summary. No, I fully just can't remember. Don't worry about it. Uh, uh, anything else? Anything else to uh, tail in there? Oh, we didn't right. even do an ad break. I remembered it. Yeah, I actually haven't done one in like three weeks. But, oh, there you go. Uh... Something that, yeah, this was going to say, something that would traditionally would be, ah, fucking yuck. But I'm actually a little bit like, oh, that's kind of cool. Um, Tyson Chandler coming back and working out with Derek Lively before the finals. Oh, dude, that is so, in, that is so something you'd be mad about. That is so something like, yeah, whatever. But that's mm. awesome. Mm, mm. Damn. Like, that's got to be... God, that is such a good... That is the perfect mentor. <laughs> Did you watch much when Tyson Chandler was like, oh, no, like I, a star? Like, like a 2011. Star. 2011 number four. I, I, I was like mostly 2013 is when I started. Oh, yeah. The Anthony right. Bennett draft was my introduction to the NBA. The Anthony Bennett. <laughs> uh, Tyson Chandler's career with the Bulls was fucking ridiculous. Yeah. Look at that, nine points per game. <laughs> <laughs> but wasn't it like, didn't they start... The the defensive player of the year was like Dwight, Tyson, Dwight. Or Hang on, like, I remember I remember his years with the Bulls being so much better. <laughs> They are not anything to behold. Maybe you're thinking of Ty Cree from Coach Carter. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's LeBron <laughs> James. There's only one Ty Cree. He had one. Yeah, he had one. He was top three in DPOI a couple of times. One at once. Yeah, he was an All Star one season. Top three, but lost to Dwight the whole time. The the Dwight DPOIs is strange, hey? Why? He well, was so good. Yeah, I'm sure he's so good, but like you know, if he played today mm. like Rudy Gobert's just getting fucking eaten alive for doing the exact same shit Dwight did yeah I just like one of them's in Taiwan fucking Boogie Cousins in Taiwan won finals MVP no shit Taylor yeah. George was there the last season no shit also won finals Different MVP league, but yeah um, <laughs> also won finals MVP uh, yeah yeah I guess Dwight would get eaten up here but like I don't know man I think I think people I think people just I think people are a bit scared with the way they vote on Defensive Player of the Year. I think there's a formula, and it's very easy to follow. Do you... And I think that people don't really give you, much time to it. You can't... Yeah, it's just so hard. It's still hard to measure defense. It's hard to measure. I mean, so, so it's like... it's When you have all these stats, it's easy to point to. But like... Fucking... 90% of the season mm. you're talking about what's happening on offense mm, then you have to vote in an award it's like fuck I actually didn't really keep well, my eye yeah, on that. So, yeah if, if you don't yeah it's a lot of it is eye test as well yeah. as like, you know, defensive rating on and shit but then like you get numbers where it's like oh okay well fucking Boyan Bogdanovich always played with Rudy so Bogdanovich's numbers are good yeah. right? like, was he good on defense yeah uh, who's the guy who's the guy that does the the uh, the questions for cleaning the glass, the like the the question uh, page, yeah. whatever his name is. Yeah. I emailed him one time, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I was like, "Hey, what's the what's the deal with this stat?" And then he was he said something about like, "Oh, but AD has like a negative defensive yeah, stat." Yeah, yeah. He's like, "But we all know yeah. that AD is a good defender." Yeah, so yeah, it's, a bit it's of tricky, dicky. Like, ciao, yep, ciao. Um, yeah, last question. What do you think about the positionless or defensive things? Like just having four centers on the first team. They get cooked. Yeah. <laughs> no, well, just do you, do you want it to stay next year? Uh, 
Yeah, I feel like positionless is usually in in favor of the wings and the guards, but in this case, it's in it's in favor of the bigs. It, it was good for all NBA, but I don't know about defense. Mm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I think you can stick with the old rules for defensive player of the year. Yeah. It's on, it's on a bit of a lag. Yeah, I, yeah, it's gonna it change will happen in three years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, anyway, Luke, that was a tight 30, uh, also known as a tight 50. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'll, next time I speak to you, the NBA Finals will be underway. Oh, awesome. I'll, I'll, I'll speak to you then. This episode of The Deep Two is presented by Gelateria Bico, the official gelato of The Deep Two. Gelateria Bico, handmade gelato in the heart of Brunswick. You want to talk WNBA? Maybe some WNBL? Australian Opals chat? Heck, even dabble in some EuroLeague? Find the W Basketball Show on the Deep 2 Podcast Network.